Hi, this is Angel Jones. I love great conversations where life's journey is communicated not only through words, but tones and emotions. Explosive expressions that allow you to feel what they felt and learned. A fool learns only from his own mistake, while the wise learn from their own and from those others have made. Thanks for being here with us. Good morning, good morning, Catherine Kemp Guiley. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful morning? I am doing great. I'm so excited to be talking with you. Thank you so much for having me on this amazing journey. Hey, hey, it's a pleasure. 1,509 conversations in three months. Every time I say it, I wonder, what have you gotten yourself into? (laughs) (laughs) It's a good question. It is a good question. Tell me, though, Catherine, which of your talents is responsible for us meeting? Well, I would consider myself an agent of change, and I believe in many different forms of communication, and I really am trying to get the word out about how we can be healthier and happier. So it's really that that need to communicate those messages that has brought us to gr- together today. Hmm. I love that. You're doing a lot in your space, right? And I, I saw that by your bio, and we'll definitely get into that. I'd like to know, though, like... The decision to impact women the way you are intending to, like, where did the strength for that come from? Well, it's interesting. I actually spent the first 10 years of my career as a management consultant working for Fortune 500 and 100 companies. And I loved that. I loved the problem solving aspects of it. But it was really when I had my kids. So I have two kids. I had my first child, a daughter, in 2000, and my son was born in 2003. And then when I learned that one out of three children will develop diabetes, these are one out of three children born in the year 2000, the year that my first child was born. Hmm. When I learned that statistic, it put me on fire to do something about it. And so I switched careers. I went back to school. I got a certification in nutritional counseling and I started a nonprofit. And um, that teaches children and family about healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. And that's led to speaking, to books, to podcasts and all the other things that I do to really try to spread these messages in a positive way. Hmm. You know, you said that, I mean, nothing in your bio said diabetes, um, but you said that and immediately, you know, my wife has just written two books. Um, one is called Poems for Patients, a focus on diabetes and the ABCs of diabetes for children. And she as well, being a registered nurse, has that same passion. I'll definitely need to connect you both after this. Um, she, I would love that. Yeah, she, she definitely, and I'll say, I said that though, um, to say that that really comes from a place of wanting to help like deep deep inside because I've seen how she activates when she when she she her desire is to help others and I'm guessing that is the same with you um wanting to help others and not just not just saying it like mouth action but making it um, foot and hand action if you may um, and I, I thank you for that as a as a person of this community of the world I appreciate that tremendously well thank you it's really what gets me out of bed every morning with a smile <laughs> hmm. why would you continue to repeat the skills that you've you've definitely had grown over time? Well, I mean, when I heard the statistic that uh, over half of the world's population suffers from a chronic disease, I mean, again, it's these, these statistics are sad and they can be downers, but like, I just see them as a kick in the pants and my own pants to do something about it. Like, I just feel like we all need to find our purpose on this planet. What is our life about what are we here to do on planet earth and so i feel like that's what i'm supposed to be here to do i'm supposed to be 
creating a change to help our world be healthier. And then when we're healthier, we're happier. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Tell me one thing you've done consistently over the last three years. Shout it out. I mean, again, using different formats, um, whether it's speaking, whether it's doing workshops, visiting schools, going to food pantries, writing books. And then now my latest endeavor, the podcast, Mountain Mantras, I have consistently just been working at getting the messages out. Hmm. I love that. How does it make you feel? Like I do have a purpose on this planet. I think that that's what we're all looking for, right? Is what, how, what is our the big picture and this big vision for our life? And so I feel like I found that and I need to follow my calling. Hmm. Why would you suggest someone do what you've done specifically to not look at the statistics from them being a donor, but to see where they can bring value as well? Oh, I'm a big believer in positive psychology. I mean, people that really do look at the glasses half full, you know, that people that are looking for the best in life, they do find that it, that changes the brain patterns. Like if you're a gratitude filled person, you're building gratitude, neuro connect, you know, connections in your brain and you will find more happiness in your life. So I also in spreading wellness, I also tried to spread positivity because the more positive, the more grateful we are, the more wonderful things we'll find in this world. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let's switch gears for a bit now, Catherine. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. What is your earliest childhood memory? Okay, I think it's when I was searching the house. I remember the emotions. I was scared and I was looking for my bear. I had a little stuffed bear that I loved so much. And I remember finding it on a dining room chair, like the chair had been tucked in. So when I looked around the room, I couldn't see the bear, but it was on the seat of the chair. And I remember that relief in finding that bear. Hmm. That bear was definitely a sign of security for you, wasn't it? Absolutely. And love and comfort. Hmm. How old do you think you were? I was probably three or four years old wow. would be my guess. Wow. So why do you think this memory is so clear? Well, I mean, I think it's it ties into what we were talking about before and that life is about seeking what we want and what we need. And it's about seeking out love and comfort. I mean, when it really comes down to it, we're not seeking what some people think is success, which is money and power. We're seeking purpose and we're seeking love. And maybe that little bear, you know, was that seeking out love and comfort and purpose to mm. me. I love that. I love that. If I would add to that thought picture, I would say, you know, you are now the bear. It's pretty intriguing. You are actually the comfort, the security for many people that are that are ch children, you know, even with, hey, you have a children's book as well, don't you? Um, don't you? I do. It's called <laughs> Give It A Go, Eat A Rainbow. And the thought of me being a bear just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which I mean helps again, right? Warm and fuzzy, teddy bear. You know, but you go. Yeah, you know, you were there. You understood the comfort that that teddy bear brought. And now you're creating that format where you are, you know, creating that for other people. And that is amazing. That is amazing. Love it. If we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song, Catherine? Without a doubt, it had to have been the Star Wars theme because I grew up as a Star Wars like heavy duty fan. Like I would just sit in the theater and watch it over and over and over and over. And I loved the, anything to do with Star Wars, but the Star Wars theme still gives me goosebumps. Wow. Wow. Amazing stuff here, folks. It's all connecting here. The warrior. <laughs> well, and the light and the dark and the universal yes. energy that we're all connected, the force. Like, mm. I just love it. <laughs> I love it, love it, love it as well. Okay, so we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration form, yes or no. Catherine, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Hmm. Are you married? 
Yes. Do you have children? I do. How many? My dear two kids, and then I have two dogs, which are kind of like my other two kids. <laughs> Four of them. <laughs> they, they register as well. Do you believe in God? I do, and I, I'm not stuck on semantics. Like I said, it could be a universal force, God, goddess, all that is, but yes. Hmm. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes, um, but they're not all in the same location. I don't believe that we have to be geographically focused. Hmm. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No way. I don't have time. <laughs> How about three hours a week? No, I don't. How about screen time, the phone and the computer? I'm not a big phone user, but um, because of the fact that I do a lot of my work online, I'm on my computer, you know, a good work day, at least eight hours a day. Okay. Okay. Catherine, this has been a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Well, I just think, again, it's all about positivity and finding your purpose. And the fact that you're doing this Guinness World Record that you've set out your goal and that you're making it so fun and positive for everyone. I just, I think it's great that you're changing the world in this wonderful way. So it's just a salute to you. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate that. And salute right back at you, you know. So we have the mounting, oh my gosh, where is it? The mounting mantras podcast as well. Hey moms, check that out as well, right? Uh, oh, I would love that. It just launched. So it's it's a great thing to check out. You can hear lots of inspiration on wellness and life success. I love it, love it, love it. And then, I mean, the, the name of the book, right? Give it a go. Eat a rainbow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, but thanks very much. Catherine kemp Kylie. thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. Amazing audience, before you leave, there's one person I'd like to introduce you to, Amanda Jones. She is my wife and her passion is to educate, encourage, and empower. Hi, I'm Amanda Jones and I'm a registered nurse. Do you or someone you know have diabetes? According to the International Diabetes Federation, in 2015 worldwide, 415 million people were living with diabetes. Just as that figure is overwhelming, so too can the effects of diabetes be. So, to help simplify diabetes for both adult and child, I've used rhymes in my books, The ABCs of Diabetes for Children and Poems for Patients, a focus on diabetes. At its simplest, rhymes help us to remember. If you, a child or friend, want an easy, reader-friendly way to know about diabetes, then get a copy of these books. For more details, you can go to poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com. <laughs>